Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Breaching the Boundaries of Business. I'm Francis Michael from Sky High VIP. The millennials are changing the face of luxury, the way they look at it. I'm at Santosa Marina, as you can see here. This is the place where the Singapore Yacht Show takes place every single year. And it has been going on for the past nine years. This year in April was the ninth uh, Singapore Yacht Show. Next year in March, it's going to be the 10th one and it's going to be big. Now, I'm actually on the way to meet Mr. Andy Treadwell. Andy Treadwell is the CEO and founder of the Singapore Yacht Show. Come with me. I have with me today Andy Treadwell, CEO and the founder of Singapore Yacht Show. Andy, thanks for joining us today. Huge pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, just, just a few uh, questions for you uh, for this interview because this is actually going to be viewed by all our members uh, around the globe. Now, research has shown that millennials at this point in time they are spending more on experiences rather than material goods. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, I read the same thing that um, I think somebody's called it and coined it as the Uber generation, uh, where they rent rather than rather than buy. And actually, that's what we're trying to do in this particular region, where we're trying to get people to try out yachting uh, because it's a, there's a lot of yachts in the world that are available to charter, and it's a great way to get people into the business. Uh, I don't personally think that people will carry on renting them, charging them, uh, once they get the boat, uh, and that's the whole point of our mission here. You know, once, you, once you have uh, a boat, you know, it becomes your prized asset, and you want it to be personal. So I think I think people will end up buying that, but it's definitely, I'm all for people, the more the merit, trying it out first. I do understand what you're saying. Uh, another thing I've actually read would be uh, millennials at this point in time, they are a little bit more careful with their money, especially when spending on high ticket items, is that true? Yeah, I mean, again, uh, I, I, I concur. Um, I think that uh, what you have to remember is that um, when you're talking about a yacht, it's a major purchase, and it's not something that's an investment in financial terms. It's always going to go down in value, uh, but it's a massively brilliant investment in personal fun, times with the family, leisure, peace, and so on. And, and discovering new places, such a course. Um, but also, I, I think that the, the majority of wealth is generational wealth. Um, and in terms of uh, how that gets spread out amongst the family members, you know, moving from one generation to the next, clearly it's going to be diluted. So there's less money available. And I think that um, also we see a trend that uh, the, the millennials are, are buying smaller boats, uh, you know, you can still buy a very big boat, but 50, 60, 70 meters, this is kind of a more targeted uh, end product for that generation as opposed to the 100 meter plus uh, yachts, which perhaps the uh, uh, forebears of the bill. Uh, Andy, I understand you have been in the yachting business for quite some time now, uh, ever since the inception of uh, the Singapore Yacht Show in 2011. Well, before that, <laughs> way before that, what do you think is the support that is actually needed to take your team to the next level? Well, here in Asia, um, you've got to remember I came here, I was um, the CEO of the company that owned the Monaco show and various other events. So yes, I read about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and so my responsibility was more about developing the business in other parts of the world. And in those days, 2008 and up to 2000. Level. You remember that the yachting industry was something like, uh, a big setback in terms of uh, buyers disappearing. And so everyone was looking to the east to see well, why is there all this wealth down there and yet people aren't buying boats. Um, so um, we came down here to see what's happening in the marketplace um, and why this opportunity wasn't being realised. And came up with some pretty succinct answers to that. And 
developed it from there. So, having established that there was a huge potential here, um, we then we could immediately that the problem was that the governments were not interested, uh, potential buyers were not informed, they didn't know anything about it. Um, and I link the two together. I think very much it's a question that if you don't have government support and interest in developing an industry sector, and here we're talking about tourism, this is yacht tourism, it's the highest spending tourism sector in the world, then you're not going to get the exposure to this particular product for the people who've got the means to enjoy it and, 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 and develop it. So that's the first thing. Got to have government understanding what's the benefit uh, to the country. And the, the key thing is this that governments tend to look at it, when I say governments, I'm being very general, but clearly we're here because ASEAN, Southeast Asia, is one of the most glorious, spectacularly huge, beautiful, and undiscovered uh, yachting destinations in the world. Um, but I mean also. Northern Asia, where maybe it's not so much a destination, but that's where the people are with all the money. So you, the, the perception was that we were asking to uh, for help in developing something which was for rich people. You know, we were asking for help in uh, finding advantages for those people. Not true. What we're trying to do is we're trying to persuade those people to come here to Asia and spend their money on local communities, and that's exactly what it is. Your tourism is direct spend into the economy. And if we encourage that, we do two things. Number one, help develop those local economies, uh, vastly improve the PR of the country, because, you know, suddenly this is all very glamorous, rather than cheap tourism. This is beautiful people, very expensive. With money to stay. Yes. And, and huge, we're talking billions of dollars here that could be cash coming into this region. Um, but at the same time, we're offering a product, and if these boats are able to charter, which they have to do, because the owners won't come here unless it costs them a huge amount of money to run the boat, it's you know, 10 15 percent value of the boat, so it could easily be five, six, ten million dollars a year to run the boat. Half a million dollars minimum to get here, all the way from the Mediterranean, which is where all the boats are. So unless they can charter them when they're not using their income. But once you get here, if you can establish the ability to charter for government giving permission, then you are encouraging other people in the region to come and try it out. You can't get them to go all the way to the Mediterranean to try something that's completely new and exactly. the place is fine. So that's where we need the biggest support. Um, and, and obviously, we, we could also get a lot more support from the corporates who want to meet these guys. You know, they're, they're the other people that could benefit. The corporates down here who, who could benefit from uh, 250 billionaires sailing into the region. Uh, there's, there's a lot of potential there. Business development, inward investment, for example. Um, Andy, what is the future of uh, yachting in Southeast Asia? Given we have actually spoken to uh, quite a number of uh, previous exhibitors who have uh, taken part in the previous yacht shows, mm -hmm. they've all said the same thing. They're saying Southeast Asia is really, really profitable. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's the sleeping giant. There's so much wealth there. I, I don't know what the numbers are, but I think at least 25% of the global uh, wealth is, is here in Asia. Um, whatever the numbers are, it's massive, and um, it is also um, important to understand that there is nothing here. So you can come to this marina and see it's full, and the other three marinas in Singapore are full. There's, there's three or four marinas in Thailand, in Phuket, that are full, or full-ish. But apart from that, there's, there's really nothing in Hong Kong. There are some marinas, um, there's a lot of unused space that could be developed in the marinas in, in the form of typhoon shelters that are no longer needed for you know, the, the vessels that used to take the goods off container ships. Um, so the, the opportunity is absolutely huge. There is, there is no yachting to speak of. It's a tiny uh, number of boats, of yachts, super yachts, everything as compared to the 
Europe or, or America? Let's talk about Singapore. Um, how many yachts can you birth here? I think there are about 200, 230 births in, uh, in this marina. That's actually changing at the moment. But the, uh, the team are reconfiguring the marina. Um, but you can't get many big boats here. You can get maybe a dozen big boats in here. And, and, and the maximum we've ever had in the show has been 75 meters. I, I think we would all be a little bit worried about getting boats much bigger than that. Here. Over in Kepler, we could get maybe half a dozen slightly bigger boats. But there aren't the facilities, there is not the infrastructure in Asia at the moment for these really big boats. But that's okay. That's okay. There's enough infrastructure here to get this market going. And once the boats come, then I think that it will be easy to get people to develop that infrastructure. And as I say, the money will come in from overseas as well if it's not already available here, which it is. So we don't need more infrastructure. Um, that will be built if the boats start coming. The boats will not start coming. The industry will not start developing. Governments in this region, especially as well, don't get together and say, let's change our regulations and make it a good thing. Okay. Now, um, let me ask you about green technology. Yeah. Now, many young brands are actually integrating eco friendly systems into their boats. Can you tell me a little bit more about this technology and what do millennials really, really want in the that's a very good question, um, and, it, and it's absolutely right. The, uh, not just the millennials are becoming much more environmentally conscious, also in the older generation. You know, the, the, the biggest yields in the world are owned by the older generation. They're also becoming very philanthropic, philanthropic in their outlook. And, um, of course, it's a, it's a bit of an obvious one. If you want to go yachting, you want to enjoy the boat, you want to enjoy the sea, the beaches and the diving, well, clearly, you're going to be interested in making sure that it's a beautiful place to be and not polluted. Um, what the industry is also evolving, you know, you've got to remember that the, the current wave of enthusiasm, the cleaning of the up, the dangers of the dramatic dangers of climate change, so it's a relatively recent thing, isn't it? It's the last 20 years or so. And so the yacht manufacturers are responding to that uh, using lighter building materials, uh, more fuel efficiency, you know, less waste, um, hybrid uh, propulsion. Very, very important. So the yachting footprint is really important to the owners today. And, and I think the, the newer generation of millennials as a whole. Uh, even more so because this is the people who are thinking this way. Amazing, isn't it? You know, Monaco is considered the uh, world super hub for key players, and Singapore, a lot of people say, is the Monaco of Asia. Do you agree? I think, um, yeah, you, it, it's, a, it's a good parallel to draw. Um, the difference is, of course, that Singapore in itself is not a yachting destination. You bought this, but at the same time, it is clearly the best place to have a business club. And for the yachting industry, it's no different. Um, so, so yes, I think it's a fair parallel. We tend to think of Singapore and Thailand as and Indonesia as, as one place. So that's why we're, we're promoting a new show in Thailand. We've got the government involved, very involved in Thailand. It's far more important that the government are involved there because that's where the boats will go and cruise. Then Indonesia, of course, is the biggest cruising, venture cruising ground in the world, but at the moment it's restricted by the private cruising and no chartering and therefore it's not very commercial um, and two local boats. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a fair parallel um, and certainly one that I'm Uh, I do understand that uh, in Indonesia, yeah, there's a lot of restrictions. There's a new marina opening up in uh, Labuan Bajo. Uh, are, you, are you involved in that in any way? Well, um, yeah, necessarily, because um, as I said, we're the only uh, yacht show in the region, the whole of Asia, so we, we do know what's going on. I've been down there 
and uh, I think it's going to be spectacular. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been to. Uh, I, I, um, I can see that there's nothing there at the moment. But there is a beautiful town that I can see quite how this will come from Santa Fe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been to Niger over right there for it. But this is so big, you know, this whole region from Myanmar uh, right across Thailand to the Gulf of Sahel on the other side, Vietnam, Cambodia potentially, all the way down the Malaysian Peninsula, and then all the way to Australia. And that's not forgetting the Philippines. It's so huge, this region. Um, but I, I don't think I've been anywhere yet quite so spectacular. That's that one about it. So I'm really looking forward to that project coming along. Crystal clear waters. Beautiful. I went swimming and diving off a reef which is no more than 100 meters from the beach. Yeah. We went up in a, in a plane and, and you can't see any rubbish anywhere. There's no plastic. Uh, no, it's fine. Come over yeah. next door. Fantastic. Um, Singapore, we had our ninth yacht show this year in April. I understand you have been through a lot of challenges putting all this together because it was such a successful show. Yeah, successful, um, it's not very commercially successful at the moment because we don't get enough support and not enough people understand the tremendous potential to do this business that the people that we bring to the show, whether they're potential buyers on, on the one side or sellers of yachts, builders of yachts, brokers of yachts, and, and all the service. And, tourism industry that goes around that. But it's coming. I can feel it. And, and we, we, we obviously need more support. The more support we get, the more we can market to the bigger markets such as China and Korea and Japan and Indonesia and so on. Uh, and, and we haven't even started yet really. I feel that we're at the very beginning still after 10 years of September's anniversary next year. But I can feel the time beginning to come. Next year it's going to be sometime in March, I presume. Yeah, that's right. We, we brought it back slightly earlier in the calendar by three weeks or so, purely to avoid the clash of Easter holidays and, and, and Song Pran in Thailand. This is a major issue for, especially for people who are exhibiting the boats, and I think for visitors as well. We think we'll get many more visitors coming uh, outside of the personal family time of Easter, Song Pran, and so on. Okay. Do you have any surprises planned for Singapore Yacht Show 2020? There aren't really very many surprises that we can spring, apart from having a bigger and better show each year with more visitors and more business taking place. Last year's show was quite spectacular in terms of the amount of business that was done. Uh, currently, I think the industry is suffering from the knock on effects of the, you know, the, the trade war situation. I think everyone's bit down in the dumps at the minute, but nevertheless there are always people who are doing very well indeed, no matter what's going on. There's always somebody doing very well. And uh, especially in the kind of the mid-range of yachts, um, you know, the production boats, um, there is always an enthusiastic audience. And, and because we're starting from nothing here, I mean I mean nothing. I think it's still true to this day that there are more yachts in one marina in France than there are in the whole of Asia together, yeah, which is quite you know, uh, an incredible thought. So there's so much potential, and it's only a question of getting people on boats, getting them to try it out on one hand, and, and, and getting a message out to enough people through a bigger marketing budget. So that's what we're trying to do, grow our budget, grow our marketing budget, more business will be done. Uh, we're, we're doing a lot more activation this year. We've got some partners coming in. We're doing a lot of uh, side shows, if you like, with the family. Uh, we've already got, maybe because it's our 10th anniversary, the people are starting to get excited about uh, the, the industry. We've already got three very big superyachts booked in for the show, uh, which is never been heard of uh, at this time of year. This is very soon. Big boats don't make their minds up until the new year, even for a show in March, because they don't know where they're going to be. So I think it's going to be a spectacular show, yeah. Okay, uh, one final question. 
I know all the effort and everything that's been put into putting up a show like this. What kind of support would you like from Singapore? Well, from Singapore, uh, you know, it, it, it's. I think it's um, it's true of all of the governments in the region. I would just like them to understand what is the potential of the thing. Now, this is quite hard, and I totally understand why it's hard for them to appreciate. But I'm not joking. We could literally be bringing 250 or more billionaires to this region very, very quickly within two or three years of some regulation changes coming into play. We could do that, and they will be simple. They would come here because this is the place where you do business. So the only support we need is changes in regulation, relaxing some of the rules. Again, that's not as important at the moment as getting the boats here in the first place, and that means just allowing people to come to charter in this region, not Singapore. Um, so where we need help is obviously funding. We need funding. You're going to have to invest if you want these guys to come here. We can bring them, it's easy to prove. Uh, and then support in terms of publicity and cooperation amongst governments to get the boats coming here. That means, you know, uh, region wide um, simplification uh, and harmonization of regulation. Some of the rules are quite ridiculous, but that's because people don't understand private working is all about. They don't understand the economic impact that they can bring. They don't understand that there are literally billions of cash dollars that could be flowing into this region. And it's our job to make them understand that. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do. Eddie, thank you so much for your time. And okay. uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. And uh, for the rest of you, thank you so much for joining us. That was Mr. Andy Trevor, CEO and founder of Singapore Yacht Show. Thank you for joining me for another round of Breaching the Boundaries of Business. I'll see you in the next round.